Bruchem Aboyim. The topic tonight is Shabbos. And again, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Um, the uh, Gemara tells us that every day has a partner. And it says that uh, Sunday has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday has Friday, and Shabbos complained to God it had no partner. And God said, no, I have a special partner for you, the Jewish nation. And so Shabbos was a special gift that was given to the Jewish nation. In fact, the Gemara Rabbah tells us that Shabbos is equal to all the 613 commandments, that just by keeping that, it's as if a person kept the whole Torah. Um, it's, it's so special, uh, many things. Number one is a Gentile cannot keep the Shabbos. It's very difficult anyways because it starts the night before and comes into the following day. But it's not, it's not something, in fact, when someone converts, they have to make sure to turn on a light or something while they're training to become Jewish just to make sure they do not keep the Shabbos. Um, on Shabbos, we have a tradition that we receive what's called an Ashami Yasera, an extra soul. Um, and that extra soul adds a special kedusha, a special sanctity, it makes us feel different. Uh, if a person can connect to that, that special feeling of Shabbos. Um, it's inter interesting, Shabbos is absolute in that you can't keep most Shabbosim. That, uh, again, I used to play racquetball in tournaments were on Shabbos, so I couldn't play. And they told me, well, just take one off. And I said, it just doesn't work that way. That Shabbos, you keep all Shabbos in 52 weeks of the year. You can't take one off. And since you kept the majority, that's okay. It's something that you have to do completely. It teaches you the discipline, again, of serving God. And every day, it's interesting that the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we have names for them in a secular world. Not in the, not in the religious world. Every day is called uh, Rishon the Shabbos, Shani the Shabbos, the first day to Shabbos, the second day to Shabbos. Everything connects to Shabbos. Shabbos is the source of our sustenance. Shabbos is the source of our blessings. Uh, everything connects to it. Um, it's, it's interesting that um, there's a belief that we have that if a person would keep, the whole world, all Jews, would keep two Shabbosim, that the Messiah, Mashiach, would come. And yet at the same time, if all Jews just desecrated one Shabbos, every Jew, no Jew kept the Shabbos, again, Mashiach would come, which is strange. So the negative is one and the positive is two. Why would that be? And the answer is what we don't understand is that all of our blessings come from Shabbos. That the only reason why the next week is blessed is because we keep the Shabbat. If no one kept it, the world would come to an end because there'd be no energy no spiritual power for the world to exist. That's how great the Shabbos is. And even though we don't seem to understand it, but that's what it is. In fact, Shabbos is called an onig, a delight. Uh, holidays are called simcha, a time of joy. And why is it a delight? It's a day where we rest as God did. When God created the world, the one thing that was missing was menucha, that day of thing of rest. Uh, we talk about God stopped creating. So it's not that God rested on the Shabbat, Shabbat. It's that God stopped creating. So we can work in the sense of um, you can move a couch because it's not a created work. But you can't turn on a light switch because that's something that chemical changes come about. So what we do on Shabbos is we cannot do a, a, we can do, do a malacha, a creative act. We can do an avoda, something that a servant would do. That we can do, because that's not creative. God stopped creating, and again, he rested. So, in fact, the, the Shabbat, the, the seven days of the week prove there's a God, because even though people have different times of, follow different calendars, uh, we follow a lunar calendar, the secular world follows, for the most part, a solar calendar, but everybody follows a seven-day week. Again, proving that, again, God created the world in six days and on the seventh day, he rested. And it's a, such a special day. It's funny, people feel sorry for us. I often say that uh, there's so many benefits. One is your wife can't shop, so you can save a few bucks. But all kidding aside, there are a Jew on, uh, we're like kings. We dress better, we eat better. Um, again, there's no work. We're not even supposed to think about work. It's a day to get away from the, from the world. It's a time to spend time with your family, with your friends. 
uh, even uh, interesting secular families, even if they have meals together, the kids are on cell phones, on game toys, whatever might be watching television. There's real no communication, no interaction. Whereas on the Shabbat, none of that's allowed. Uh, you know, people will tell you that they had such a great time, they went up to a mountain, you know, in a cabin in a mountain, no electricity, no phones, you know, just with nature. We do that every day, and every week in the city, and that's the Shabbat, where we get away from the secular world, and we're able to really communicate with people, with family. Um, in a Jewish family, a religious family, children can never say they didn't have time with parents, because no matter what happens, no matter how busy you are, when it's sundown on Friday, that's it. Everything shuts down. And that's 25 hours of being able to be with families and friends. Uh, Shabbat dinner can last three, four hours. It's wonderful. Nobody's in a hurry. Where are you going? There's nothing there. And you can actually be with people and share, uh, spend time with friends. Uh, it's interesting. I, you know, I read health magazines and whatever, my bathroom reading. And uh, I see again and again, they say, keep the Shabbos. And what they're talking about is just step away from the world. Take a break. Because in the world, many times we keep doing the same thing over and over again, and we get into this rut. There are many times you'll be doing something, and you get the wrong answer. Even though you know that you're making a mistake, you can't find it. But if you walk away and then come back to it sometime later, you find the mistake right away. If you would have stayed there and worked on it, you would just keep seeing the same mistake over and over. That's what the Shabbat is. It gives us a chance to recharge, to move away, to come back at the world again with a greater energy and a clarity that we wouldn't have otherwise. A real blessing from God. And it's uh, the, the word Shabbat, Shin Beis Tuf, is an acronym for Shina B'Shabbos Tainug or Shana B'Shabbos Tainug. That uh, sleep on Shabbos is an uh, enjoyment and learning on Shabbos is an enjoyment. So which one is it? It really can be both. But what it comes down to is some people, again, that learn all week and are very busy doing that. So on the Shabbat, they can catch up on their sleep. And those people who are busy working in the secular world and don't have time to learn, the Shabbat gives them an opportunity now to learn. And again, when a person on the Shabbat learns, he shows that his, he's, he's interested, he really wants to. And this way, God gives him credit even for the rest of the week when he doesn't have an ability to do so. Also, siach. Bashabas um, Tainuk, that's a word for discourse, talking, and also prayer. That, uh, again, a person on Shabbos should talk about important things, things that are, have to do with uh, learning and religion, things that deal with God. Uh, the secular, you know, sports and everything else is good the rest of the week. You know, Shabbos should be special, not, even in what, not just in what you eat and what you wear, but also what you talk about and what you're thinking about. Now, Shabbat, we call, again, the two mitzvahs that we have on Shabbos is called Shomer V'Zacher. The Torah talks about that, to guard the Shabbos and to remember the Shabbos. Now, it's interesting, the word Shomer, guard, also means, in fact, from the two terms, we know we add to Shabbos before it begins and after it ends. That's why we really keep Shabbos for 25 hours. But the word Shomer we see with Yaakov, that when he heard about the dream of Yosef, he says, Aviv Shomer Sadaver that his father guarded the thing, which Rashi says anticipated, waited for it to happen. So not only are we commanded to, so to speak, guard the Shabbos so that we make sure not to uh, violate any of the commandments, but also to anticipate its coming. And that's why we talk about the first day toward Shabbos, the second day toward Shabbos. If a person has something special to eat, he should save it for Shabbos. If a person has something special to wear, he should wear it on Shabbos. He should celebrate the day as something special. And it's interesting that the word zachar, to remember, also has numerical value as the word bracha, which is blessing. That all of our blessings come from the Shabbat. Uh, the, uh, the Gemara tells us that if we were to keep two Shabbosim, in a row, the whole world, all Jews, that Mashiach would come, the Messiah would come. On the other hand, if the whole Jewish population in the world would not keep one Shabbat, then Mashiach would come again. And it's strange that the negative brings it quicker than the positive. And the answer is because all of our blessings, bracha, comes from the Shabbat. That without Shabbat, we have no blessing. And that's why every week, that Shabbat comes and recharges the world and the blessings that we have come from that. It's interesting that people many times work 
on the Shabbat. They work seven days a week because they feel that they need to make more money, that it becomes what gives them their sustenance. And the truth is that I'm, we believe on Rosh Hashanah, how much you make will be decided on Rosh Hashanah for the whole year. So what God says is, you know, you can work six days a week and you're going to make as much as you make on seven. So I'm giving you a day off. Now, if a person decides he wants to work, the end result will be that he may gross more, but he's going to net exactly the same thing. Not only that, we believe that the expenses that we spend on the Shabbat, that God just deducts that, that he doesn't consider that part of what he decides we will make for the year. So it's really a gift from a benevolent father for us that we need to know. And a person, in fact, there was an accountant who said he figured out how much he would make working on the Shabbat, and obviously he actually made. And if he subtracted what he made on the Shabbat, it's exactly what he netted. So this becomes the key. There's no real benefit. It's not something that has blessings on what you make. And the, um, there are so many, uh, in fact, the first word in Torah is the word bereshit. Um, and if you break it down into two words, it's yira Shabbat, the fear or awe of Shabbat. Also, the Bora Shes, the guy created the world in six days. And then again, we have this special day of awe for us to connect with our Creator. Also, the word HaShabbat, the Shabbos, is also the word Tshuva. That the first Shabbat, uh, Adam, first man, had sinned by eating from the tree of knowledge. And he repented on that first Shabbat. And that's why the Psalm 91, I believe, is Mizmor Shir Lioma Shabbat, that a psalm of praise for the for the Shabbat, which was which was authored by Adam, by first man. Also, that the word Shabbat, if you move it around, is the word Boshes, which is shame. That uh, a person needs to see it as a, as a humility, a day of, of retrospect, to be able to do that tshuva. Also, that Shin Bat in the Ad Bash, the word Shin, the letter Shin has a numerical value as, as the name of God of the yud Vovke. vav -ke. So it's also God's daughter, or God's house. Again, connecting with God on a very special level. If you take the numerical value of Shabbat, 702, 7 and 2, if you add them together again, is 9, a day of truth. Because uh, we know that the word emet is, is 4, 4, and 1, which is 9. And the, and the, the uh, number 9 signifies truth. If you multiply times any number, it comes back to truth. And on Shabbat, we have uh, three meals. Uh, it's interesting that the Gemara talks about two meals every day, but in the Shabbat, there's three. We have the, the evening meal, which, connect, which connects with the three forefathers, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The evening meal connects to Yitzchak, and it connects to Gvura, which is the concept of Shomer, of guarding the Shabbos, uh, leaving the secular world, which isn't easy. A person needs strength to do that. And then the morning meal is connected to Avramavinu after a good night's sleep and all that we have. It's chesed, the kindness of Avram. This has, connects again with the word zacher, which we mentioned is bracha, that flow of blessing that we get on Shabbat. And then the third meal connects to Yaakov, who is the epitome of both the chesed and gevura of his father and his grandfather, which is the trait of tiferes, which is beauty, and also the idea of emet, of, of truth. And again, we call that the Shalos Sudos. All three meals come together. And at the end, we have this great blessing. And that leads us into the week. That propels us into a week of blessing. And a person needs to know, even though you may not feel it, you may not know it, much like a person taking a medicine, you may not understand it, but it gives you what it needs to be. The greatest gift we have, again, is the Shabbat. The way a Jew takes care of the Shabbat is the way the Shabbat takes care of a Jew that it creates Jewish neighborhoods, has your kids playing with Jewish children. They wind up going to school, even public school, still with Jewish children. They wind up marrying them. If the conservative movement had to do again, they would not allow Jews to drive on the Shabbat because it doesn't make Jewish neighborhoods. When you keep the Shabbat, you have to live within a mile of a shul, and therefore it creates a whole nucleus for your whole family. And again, the greatest gift that God has given us is the Shabbat. We need to appreciate that and get involved in it and see the beauty and again, the way that you treat the Shabbat, God will give you the blessings for the whole week. May God bless you. And again, Shabbat Shalom and enjoy. Thank you for coming.